All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to download and how to actually install the ignition from induct inductive automation. Again, you want to visit inductiveautomation.com. You basically go to the download section. They give you a version you can try. And then this, it is a resettable version. So do not worry about, you know, if you're going to lose your work or if you're going to do this or that. So this will allow you to use the software just as a practice. So you get familiar with it. You can teach yourself. When it comes down to it, you want to always get your downloads from inductive automation, not anywhere else. And then as you see, I've already downloaded. So um, you put your information in afterwards. They ask you your, your contact information and stuff like that. Not a big deal. Everybody puts their email address in. So anyway, I've, I've went ahead and downloaded it myself and I got the install right here. It's eight one. So let's actually copy that real quick and put it on my VM. And we're going to paste that on my VM right quick. So we can talk about this real quick. And this version right here is 8.14. Okay. So in this, and obviously I'm a windows based system. So keep in mind, I'm a windows 64. So this is the windows 64 installer. You want to right click and then you want to go ahead and run the ins as it admin. Right. So always run as admin when you're installing software, because again, it just clears everything. Any kind of small little bugs up that you might could be there. All right. So you start the install. <clears throat> it's very, very simple from here. There's a couple of things that you need to know when it comes to uh, setting up the there's a default gateway and stuff like that. You need to remember that. So it's welcome to ignition. Again, we're just going to click next. Where do you want your program files? I am perfectly fine with C drive program files. Um, the ignition server, <clears throat> what do you want to put your, your gateway service name? Um, you can put ignition or you can put uh, something like Shane <coughs> practice or Shane training. Okay. so. Next, I want to, it's going to give you the modules, right? So what modules do you want to use, right? Classic modules are going to be something like, you know, SQL, Perspective, Vision, uh, OPC UA, uh, again, um, good drivers for Allen Bradley, which is, and Siemens, and Mod, Modbus, right? So a lot of the most common things that we use in today's automation. All right. Well, when it comes to the install, you go to the install, you're ready. It is downloading and installing actually not downloading you already have the uh, download you you need it is installed in libraries right now that you have selected um, when it comes down to it this should when it finishes open up a web page okay all right so it says start ignition now we want to go ahead and start ignition now this is going to open up a web page and that web page does not have to be connected to the internet okay so it's going to be a local on your computer so keep in mind, just like this, right? It's a local host. So what I like to do is I like to come in here and make a dot, uh, notepad <clears throat> because you're going to need this, right? So I like to put in my, my default information, right? So for one, I like to capture that I'm going to be a local host dot, uh, you know, uh, eight, eight or 80, 88, and then welcome. Okay, so this is where you're going to actually install and, and get your standard version, your, your Ignition Edge, your, your Maker Edition. Um, again, I'm not going to restore anything right here. So let's go let's continue through this process. Okay, so we have our web page. We have, uh, we have it basically put in right here, localhost. We're going to choose the standard edition. We want to choose to the user agreement. We want to go ahead and say yes. And then at this point, you can put in a username. I'm going to put Shane. Uh, and then I'll put my password uh, that I always use for systems lately. Um, when it comes down to it, you put in whatever you want to. You can put in admin up here. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, then you click next. At this point, you can choose your ports. Okay. So you can choose your ports that you're using. Um, again, I like to leave these as default because that's generally uh, this is going to be used for practicing and this is going to be used for training and it's going to be used for just general stuff. So, but in the real, in the real world, this could possibly change. Just keep that in mind. 
So at this point right now, you can start up your gateway. This point right here is, uh, again, starting your gateway and actually going through that. So part of this is, like I said, we, we've installed the software and then we come back and then we install, we, we start the gateway, we configure the gateway. Without configuring the gateway, I mean, you, you really can't go any further. So we do have to install modules, so keep that in mind. There are important por parts coming up in this next portion as far as after installing the gateway. You can see the gateway is started. It's going to give you some quick navigations. You can quickly just, if you just don't want to go through that, you can quickly just, no, I don't want to go through that. I'd like to start from scratch. All right, so we, we talked about the uh, downloading, you know, different modules and stuff like that. But first, in the gateway, you need to understand too, or, or where it's, it's most important. First off is we're in trial mode, right? So we're in trial mode. You get a two hour trial mode. That's easily reset when it comes down to the configuration. Um, when it can in the configuration though, when you do your setups and stuff like that, you're, this is where you're going to set up your connections. Say you have a SQL connection or you have an uh, OPC UA or, or any kind of uh, connection to your PLC. First, again, you use that user sign in that you used. You want to sign in and go from there. At that point, again, let's, let's just save that for instance. If you have a, like an OPC or let me say a SQL, you can come down here to connections and then add a connection down here. You can choose if it's MySQL, if it's uh, Microsoft SQL, whatever the case may be. I do not have a SQL connection, so I'm not going to do this. The next thing that um, we need to look at too is OPC UA. This is going to be for your drivers uh, if to any PLC, any PLC program, stuff of that nature. At this point, you click next and again, we, where were we? We were down here in the, well, right here in OPC UA and, and connections. So if you're, let's just say you're using Allen Bradley Legacy, which is uh, version 20 or below or something like that, you can choose these two, right? Um, it, in our case, we're going to be 21 or higher, so we're going to choose this. And then, you, but you can see all the stuff you can connect to, right? Um, you have Mitsubishi, you have Modbus, you have uh, all uh, Backnet if you want to choose choose to use Backnet for stuff. Um, you have uh, Siemens down here. You have a whole different slew of different things that you can use. Again, and if you have something that's not listed, you can always choose OPC UA and then uh, add it in yourself, right? <clears throat> so just click next for that. And then this, this next tab, what we'll do is we'll talk about how to set all this stuff up right here and making this a little bit easier too, just to give you this information. Like, uh, you can name this, uh, like I said, uh, whatever program you're going to be running. Um, in this case, let's just throw in, uh, the P like a PIDE, uh, program that I did. And we're going to connect this to a live actual processor. Now keep in mind, if you're using emulator, there's a completely different setup. You have to, you're forced to use an OPC DA and you're set, you set that up manually. Um, but again, and that's going through and doing that a, a, a little bit different than what we just shown. This is connecting to a live PLC. Okay. So a live PLC processor. So we'll just call this PLC or PID, uh, programming. Let's see, programming. All right, so description, what is it? It's actually PID programming, um, so that's fine. The IP address, uh, let's, just, let's just make sure we have good connectivity outward. Uh, let's open up RS links. <clears throat> and you can see what I have actually in my racks that I'm using. So right here, you can see, this is gonna actually auto browse and clear some of these. It's gonna X out some of these and some of these is gonna choose so this right here is one of the processes. So I have a ball screw, I have a batching project. Um, we can actually tie in my batching project if, yeah, that would be better. So I think it, it probably would at this point. So let's go ahead and change this to the batching, All right, change the name, change the name. Okay, so batching. <clears throat> didn't want to change there for a second. Yeah, batching project. So 
So that matches what we have here, matching project, matching station project. And again, so we want to know the IP address, right? So at, th at this point, the IP address to communicate to that is going to be a 192.168.125. Um, that's going to actually communicate through another um, actual connection. Now I can move that connection and plug in directly to my Ethernet card, uh, but this will still get the same result, right? So let's choose that and put that in for our IP address, 192.168. 168 sorry typed in wrong one and then we said it was 35 or 25 yeah don't know why i had 35 stuck in my head but 25 is the actual um information so at this point that's really all you need you can show advanced properties if you want to um you know timeouts and stuff like that auto brow or automatically rebrowse stuff like that i mean i i generally keep that as as it is what it is uh, the slot number this is important okay so as you see in my processor my my rack that I have currently is control logics rack uh, it's not processor zero it's not slot one not two not three not four not five but it is slot six so what slot number should we put down here uh, we do need to put in slot six so it does know where to communicate to okay so just keep that in mind all right, so we have our, our information and then description would just be, uh, you know, uh, training from batching station project. <clears throat> All right, so we'll hit create device. This now has the device created. We do have a connection. So it, it does show you if it's enabled it does show you the status of that connection. So at that point, you do have a valid connection to your process if you've set everything up properly. If you haven't, then you need to go in and do an edit, right? But in this case, we already have everything set up. So what we're gonna do is go into our next steps. So just as you, like if you wanted to, like it does say, hey, I got a connection, right? But if you wanna actually check that real quick, you can just go to your uh, OPC connections and you go to quick um, OPC quick client this will show you the actual server you can refresh it real quick and then come down here and look at your devices for one you can look at your server is there anything in the servers we have not set up any servers we did set up a device the batching station project we did set that up and it is pulling data from this point um, uh, as far as the controller you can see all of the tags that I have in that project you can currently uh, <clears throat> come in there and look at that, right? So I have a batching sequencer that I use the uh, plant PAX sequencer on. Um, you can see that it does pull all that stuff up, that information up. So just be understand that you can pull up your information from here and understand how your structure is. And this is all your tags, really. So if you think about that, that's your tags and that's the way you set everything up. So when it comes down to it, um, this has basically got a good setup right now and what we're going to do is we can install the actual designer software and then we have to do that before we actually can use it right but we first we need to establish a communication path which we have we do have our tags and we do know how to test it to see if we have live data so for the quick and easy way you can go to get designer right here or you can go back up to your home so you can go to home and you can choose to get the designer right here and download or you can just do it from your configuration window because you are already here and then click get designer at this point you go ahead and this is going to be your like your hmi side of things basically connecting everything so what you want to do is you want to download that again i don't have an ethernet connection so let me go ahead and establish that ethernet connection first and let me see let's go in here and because this is a VM and I generally don't connect my VMs to the internet, but for the sake of what we're doing here, we want to go ahead and have an internet connection. Uh, if you don't have an internet connection, so just know that you may have to do this step separate and then come back and install it, right? So we want to then download right here. Let's see, well, it's actually this. Yeah, so I want to keep it and then open the file. So we want to open the location and then install again 
as we're installing, we want to right click and run as admin. Okay. And then run as admin for all, install for all users, create on desktop. That's perfectly fine. And then we're going to install the designer la uh, launcher stock, you know, version, right? So that the designer uh, side of things of, of uh, inductive automation. Again, it comes down here and wants to make sure that you are, you know, you have access for your fire, any kind of firewall rules and stuff like that. And then you can, at this point, you can start adding your projects. So this basically sums up like setting everything up and doing everything. Um, and then when it comes also to, let, let's talk about this trial version thing. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but my trial just went ahead and defaulted to where it was like, okay, I'm done. Um, even though I didn't run out of my two hours. So you just sign in and reset. So basically put in your information right here and then you can press reset trial and you start your system over again. Again, I don't know why that timer ran short, but again, when it comes down to it, that's all you do to reset it. So when it comes down to if you're working on something and you need to reset it real quick, that's what you do. So hopefully you learned a lot as far as like installing and understand the importance of things. Again, when it comes down to it, make sure you understand where this local host is. And that's going to be always where you're going to uh, use to configure your basically your gateway side of things. Uh, the designer doesn't necessarily need that all the time. But again, when it comes down to that, uh, you want to make sure that you do have your communication set up through your gateway. And that's how you do that. You got to have that that local HTTP local host. You got to have that in there and your password and everything to set up to actually access that. So now you've seen how to um, actually get the software, install the software and how to get it functional. Um, but again, this is case by case basis as far as that goes. So depending upon what device you're using, but hopefully that did help you and we'll see you guys on the next one.